Uh, Congresswoman Pengree, it is fair to say, has had a greater impact on Congress, where she's been all of 10 minutes, a greater impact than many members of Congress have in Congress. She has been the majority leader of the Maine Senate. Then she was national president of Common Cause, the good government and accountability group. And then last year was elected to Congress. She, uh, in the Maine legislature in many ways, was the mother of public financing there. And one of the consequences is that the new speaker of the Maine House of Representatives, I believe the youngest in the country, is her daughter, elected on a clean money model. And then speakers, and let me turn over the microphone. Well, thank you very much, and thank you to Michael for uh, both hosting this conference and for your absolutely perfect words in opening this up. Um, I will be the first speaker in history who actually sticks to the time limit and goes a little bit under because uh, I need to catch a plane a little bit after 10 o'clock and uh, have an event up in Maine with the Speaker of the House. And you can imagine, if I am late for something she is sponsoring, I am in very big trouble. So um, I want to just thank you for giving me about three minutes of my... Uh, of my uh, 10 minutes to just uh, welcome everyone here today and thank you all for the great work that you've done. I'm sorry I don't have a chance to say hello to all of my old colleagues in the room who I'm very, very glad to see and, uh, and just anxious to encourage you to, to recognize that this is indeed uh, yet one of those incredible moments in time. I know all of you have worked long and hard in a whole variety of ways to fix this system, but I do have a sense that this is the time when uh, we, we could really do something different, and I am just honored to be uh, a member of Congress in this moment. You know, I have one story that I tell over and over again, and many of you have heard it before, but it still is, uh, for me, the sort of personification of, of why I think uh, we, we have to change this. We all talk about the, the corruption, which is enormous, the distraction for what we do, um, and, and all those things are evident in, in all of our daily lives as we uh, attempt to, to manage the affairs of Congress. But I think back to 2002, when, as many of you know, I first ran for federal office. I'd served in the state legislature for eight years. We'd passed clean elections. I didn't have the opportunity to run under that myself. In 2002, I decided decided to run for the United States Senate. And I learned firsthand that what you do when you run for the United States Senate, and it's even harder now than it was then, or when you run for Congress, is you find yourself a nice little white room somewhere. And you plant yourself in there, and if you're lucky, you have three or four people sitting outside on telephones. And you set up a telemarketing operation. They start putting in the calls, uh, one right after another, and say, uh, I have uh, Shelly Pingree on the line. She's running for the United States Senate. Can you take her call? And if you get a, if you get a call through, which most of them you don't, because busy people don't take your calls, and everyone knows what you want anyway, uh, the call comes through. You're sitting there in your little white room, and uh, you say, hi, I'm Shelly Pingree. I'm running for the United States Senate, and you go into the fastest speech you possibly can, and you ask them for, in those days, $1,000. And if you get the $1,000, um, you, you mark them down and you say, uh, can I put you back on the phone and somebody will take your credit card right now. Well, that um, doesn't seem to me like any way to run a democracy. You, you call people all over the country, you beg for lists. When you run out of names, you try to find other lists, you sneak them from other people, you do whatever you possibly can. And think about this. At the exact same moment when I was running for the United States Senate, raising millions of dollars so I could put my ads on TV and get the information out there, there was my wonderful daughter at 26 years old uh, running under clean elections. Now she found uh, 50 people who agreed to write a check for $5, their own check. Somebody would say, you know, whether I agree with you or not, I support the idea that a young person would run for office. Here's my five dollars. And when she qualified, she got a reasonable amount of money to run for office. It wasn't a lot of money, but it meant she could put up lawn signs, she could send out a few pieces of mail, do some radio ads in her district. But the rest of her time was knocking on doors, going to people's doors and saying, hi, I'm Hannah Pingree. Do you have time to tell me what you're thinking? about the issues in our district? Are you concerned about education or health care? And when she ran out of doors to knock on, she'd go down to the fish pier or the supermarket or host a little coffee. But she never once had to say, can you write me another check for $1,000 or $500 or endless amounts of money in some states? Now, Hannah is fond of reminding me that at the end of that election cycle, she actually won. I didn't win that election. Uh, but I came back, and I was, of course, reminded when I ran again, uh, don't forget. That's what you'll do again. 
this time two and a half million dollars. You know, it wasn't quite as hard for me this time. I had a mailing list. I knew a lot of people. I had a better shot of winning. But the fact is, much of my campaign was spent by building a finance operation, traveling around the country, telling people, yeah, we need one more person in this seat. Uh, you know, this, this is just no way to run a democracy. Having to attach yourself to people with money, not the people in your district. Uh, doesn't accomplish the kinds of things that we want to do. So I was very excited when I got to Congress and uh, about a month ago had the chance to stand up with uh, Senator Lars or Congressman Larson, who's uh, sponsoring the bill in the House, uh, Walter Jones from North Carolina, a bipartisan bill. We have a little issue in the Senate now because we have Dick Durbin and Arlen Specter, so we got to go out and find a new Republican since our Republican is now a Democrat. But the fact is, uh, for the first time, we have uh, leadership signed on to this bill, um, really looking at a different way of doing it, very much modeled after the way we go about doing things in Maine. You know, in Maine now, we've been doing this for many years. Over 80% of our state legislators, Republicans and Democrats, use the system. People have learned that this is the way that you can recruit more people, that you can get a lot more people engaged in politics. We have a lot of young people in the Maine legislature. As you heard, my daughter's the youngest speaker of the House in the country, but a lot of other young people um, are also serving, and that's true in the other states as well, and I know you'll hear many more statistics. So I'm very excited that Maine has become the model for what we're doing in Congress. You know, it's a little bit different, and I'm, I'm in a room full of experts. I'm not going to go into all the details details of how this is going to change or why people think that will uh, serve us better in the courts. But I, I will say one thing about that. You know, the minute this bill got announced, I started hearing from some of my advocacy friends in Maine, and they said, well, this isn't exactly the Maine bill. Now it's got this matching grants, and you can actually continue to raise small donor contributions, which I think is a reflection of the respect people have of, of uh, the opportunities out there with small donors. And I had to write, write back to them and say, you know, Stop. This is our moment in time. You know, we could bicker until uh, the lights are shut out here. We could, we could stay here forever to try to get the perfect bill. But what we have here is a moment. And I can tell you, when I take this around to my newly elected freshman colleagues and say, you know, there might be a better way of going about doing this. Now, remember, this is my freshman colleagues who join all of their senior colleagues. As soon as a vote is finished taken on the floor, where do you think everybody goes? They run out of that building as fast as they can to get over to the Democratic headquarters so they can go into the little cubicle and sit around next to everybody else and start putting in those calls. Because if you're a freshman in a tough district right now, you've got to have a quarter of a million dollars by the first quarter. Some of them have to have three quarters of a million dollars by the end of the second quarter. Uh, yeah, maybe there's a $2,400 limit now, but that means you're spending all of your time skipping out on your committee meeting, uh, not, not spending your time calling your constituents back home. And I guarantee you nobody likes this. Nobody wants to be doing this. Nobody wants to be calling the people who are going to stand before your committee tomorrow testifying on why they need a new defense contract or why the new health care plan should will look in a certain way. People want to be doing exactly what we should be doing, and that's talking to our constituents and making good policy and making a better democracy. So I, I think the time is right. I think uh, of, of you know, senior members and freshman members, there are an awful lot of people there who are saying this is our moment in time. And don't worry, Congress will have plenty of scandals to back this up so everyone doesn't forget um, that it's not a good idea to tie money to politics. So I, I just want to emphasize how important I think it is that we take this moment, we take the fact that leadership in both houses have signed on to a bill. Congressman Larson has promised this is going through the committee, it's going to come out of this committee. This bill is going to pass the House. This bill will pass the House. Uh, it might be a little more of a challenge in the Senate, but that's why we have a wonderful room full of people like this. We're going to help us figure out exactly how to do it. But uh, this is our moment. I'm very proud to be there. I don't ever want to have to tell that story again and again and again um, about what it's like uh, when my daughter goes to run for office and how different it is uh, when I do. So I, I, I really, truly um, need to run, catch a plane, get back to Maine, uh, have one of those wonderful days with my constituents and uh, doing the things I need to do. But again, I, I just want to thank you all for being dedicated to this cause that, that not everybody understands is the essence of uh, how we are able to make good policy or not. So I commend you for being here. I am very sorry I won't be able to spend the day here because I think there's going to be some wonderful conversations and um, a lot of enlightening on this topic. But again, thank you all for your dedication and uh, look forward to seeing you all in the future. Thank you very much.